Amelia Ellicott's Garden by Liliana Stafford and Stephen Michael King. A long time ago, Amelia Ellicott's family owned most of Sampson Street from the fish and chip shop on the corner to the roundabout on the main road. Now Amelia Ellicott and her cat Mustafa live in number 56 next door to a three-storey block of flats with a high fence in between. Every day Amelia Ellicott goes about working in the garden as if the flats and the people who live in them don't exist. This used to be such a select neighbourhood she says to Mustafa. Amelia Ellicott's garden is getting out of hand. The roses near the road are almost too big, too big for her to prune and her once beautiful lawn is chock full of weeds. But she is proud of her home and she is immensely proud of her chickens. Amelia Ellicott's chickens aren't just ordinary chickens, they are prize peck and bantams, the colour of sunshine and marigolds. Every morning Amelia Ellicott feeds them corn. And every evening she visits them and stays for a chat. In the spring she had waited anxiously for the new chicks to hatch and when the first tiny fluff ball of chicks poked out from under the wings of the broody hens, she wished, just for a second, that there was someone to show them to. But there was no one, for Amelia Ellicott's family died a long time ago, and Mustafa refuses to be interested in chickens. But Tony Timponi is, every evening before supper, he sits on the balcony of his third story flat and watches the chickens scratching in their yard. Back home in Italy, Tony and his wife Donna kept chickens and goats and grew fruit, trees and vegetables. Now they live in a flat. Life is hard, says Tony Timponi, as he watches Amelia Ellicott's chickens. Life is terrible hard. Adrian Popper agrees. He looks down into Amelia Ellicott's garden and wishes he could have just the tiniest corner to grow cabbages and zucchinis. His neighbour Lynn Lee, sipping an early morning cup of tea, dreams of ducks paddling about on Amelia Ellicott's fish pond. The Martinovich children, trying to see over the fence, plan a tyre swing in the big mulberry tree. And Nicole Boutel, hurrying to catch the bus, stops for a moment to smell the roses, but no one ever says a word. They are too shy, and besides, Amelia Ellicott never gives them the time of day. Then one grey and wintry afternoon, there is a terrible storm, and the wind whips up Samson Street like a tornado. Amelia Ellicott watches in horror as her garden flies past the window. The red and white umbrella she bought for the patio, the pink rose bush, several pot plants, the rubbish bin and the chicken house roof. No, not the chicken house roof. She runs outside just in time to see the wind fling the sheets of corrugated iron against the fence. Then it lifts them up and dumps them into the car park of the block of flats. Next come the chickens and finally Amelia Ellicott herself with her skirt over the top of her head. And there in the pouring rain are all the neighbours running around chasing chickens or trying to catch bits of Amelia Ellicott's garden. Amelia Ellicott straightens her skirt Oh dear, she says, what it to do? Not to worry, says Donna Timponi. You come in and sit down. I'll make you a nice cup of tea. While they drink tea, 
In Donna Timponi's smart little kitchen, Tony Timponi and his neighbours catch all the chickens, even the cockerel who is high up in the mulberry tree. Then they carry all the sheets of corrugated iron into Amelia Ellicott's garden and nail them back on the chicken house roof. Amelia is so grateful she turns the colour of beetroot. Thank you, she says as politely as she can. Thank you so much. We'll come tomorrow and help clean up, says Adrian Popper. No offence for a while, eh? Amelia manages a smile. No, she agrees. No offence. You could grow cabbages in that patch, says Adrian thoughtfully. I like cabbages, says Amelia. And zucchinis. We used to grow zucchinis over there. Do you think? The following spring, Amelia Ellicott's chickens hatch. Twelve tiny fluffball chicks. And Amelia shows them off to everyone. <laughs>